From the News Channel 5 Network, this is On The Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I am Ben Hall. Tonight, uh, an emotional topic for many. We're talking about guns and gun safety and the executive actions recently taken by the president. Now, sometimes we have um, people on the show that are, are more pro-gun in nature tonight. We have asked both sides to come on. We have one side. Happy to have you call in to represent the other side. I will also um, be asking questions along those lines, but we are very happy to have with us Beth Jocelyn from the Safe Tennessee Project. Beth, thank you for being with us. Sure, thanks for Beth having Jocelyn me. Beth Jocelyn Roth, Yes. Safe Tennessee Project. Yes. What is the Safe Tennessee Project? Uh, so we are a nonprofit um, that is um, focused on trying to reduce gun violence in the state of Tennessee. And when did you start? Uh, so the Safe Tennessee Project got started um, about this time last year. Um, I founded um, the organization along with two, um, two friends and colleagues. Uh, the three of us had been part of a larger national organization um, that was doing really great work, but we were very concerned about what we saw happening um, here in Tennessee, and we wanted to concentrate our efforts on, um, on, on our state where we were all raising our families. So there are groups, obviously, that are taking this issue on nationally. You're focused more on Tennessee. Right. You're going up to the legislature. Correct. In Tennessee. Yes. I would think you meet some resistance. What, what is it like <laughs> when you go up there and you say, I'm from the Safe Tennessee Project, and I, I think this, this, and this about guns? Uh, well, um, <laughs> Uh, it, it, we do meet a lot of resistance, um, and we expect that, um, but we um, believe in um, data and facts and evidence-based solutions, and, you know, we feel like this is not a sprint. It is a marathon, um, and, you know, we feel like um, we're on the right side of this, so we're just going to keep plugging along even when we're met with resistance. So in the past year, are there things you can point to that indicate change here in Tennessee? Or, or not. I guess where 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 does things stand as far as the progress you feel you're making? Well, what's really interesting is you see what happens in the legislature, um, and you you hear what um, the legislators say um, in support of um, you know uh, a, a loosening of, of gun laws. But what's interesting is polling data actually um, reflects otherwise. What we've seen in polling um, that was done by both MTSU and Vanderbilt um, over the last couple of months is um, actually broad support for uh, things like background checks for all gun sales. Um, uh, I believe uh, the Vanderbilt and MTSU poll, the numbers were around 83 to 84 percent of Tennesseans that supported background checks for all gun sales. Um, and you know, I can't think of that many things that that many Tennesseans would agree on. Um, so I think that's that's significant. Um, and I think you know, there's kind of this idea that the issue of um, of, of Gun law reform is, um, you know, this intractable, intractable, intractable uh, issue, and that there is no common ground. But um, you know what we see is that that's not necessarily the case. And, and within that polling data, uh, you know, that even included um, uh, gun owners and Republicans, and even people who identified as as Tea Party um, supporters. So, you know, I think there is um, an appetite for some um, what we feel is com common ground. So that is optimistic. So right. there's appetite for common ground. And I guess we just, this debate gets so emotional. Right. And, and it, it seems like there, there, the concern on the part of some is that it's a slippery slope. Right. If, if we give anything in the way of gun control, then it leads to, to more and more. So the answer is nothing. Right. How do you address those concerns? I mean, is that... Is that true? Uh, do you feel like, or what, what? What do you say to people that feel that? Um, well, you know, that's 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 difficult because, um, you know, I can say to people um, over and over that, um, you know, we don't want to ban guns, we don't want to confiscate guns, we don't want to do anything that would prevent um, a law-abiding person who's not a prohibited purchaser from being able to buy a gun. Um, you know, I can say that over and over. Um, it's the truth. Uh, but 
you know, there are those who refuse to listen um, to that or refuse to believe you when you say that. Um, you know, as, as somebody who's worked with gun violence prevention organizations from around the country, um, I can tell you that there's not any any organization out there that's actively seeking to, uh, you know, repeal the Second Amendment or, uh, you know, take everyone's guns away. Um, so that can be kind of frustrating dealing with that. Um, you know, uh, what we're looking for, I mean, what it comes down to, the bottom line is we're just looking for some common sense ways to reduce the number of people who are injured and killed um, due to guns every year. And we think that there are ways that we can, that we can do that. What got you into this? So you said it started a year ago. Right. Um, what, what started the Safe Tennessee Project? Uh, well, what I would say, I mean, like I said, you know, we were all part of an, a larger national organization and we decided we wanted to focus um, specifically on Tennessee. But for myself personally, um, you know, guns were really not even something that I really thought much about. I mean, of course, I had people in my family that had guns, um, but it really wasn't anything that I thought much about. Um, and then um, Aurora happened. Uh, and uh, I remember being in the car with my kids uh, who were younger at the time and listening to the news coverage about it and then being very afraid. Um, and it was concerning to me, you know, like what, what could that really happen? You go to a movie and then there's this horrible shooting. Um, and so it kind of was on my radar. And then, um, you know, just six months later, um, Sandy Hook happened. And um, when Sandy Hook happened, uh, it had a very profound um, effect on me. Um, at the time, uh, my daughter was a second grader. My son was a fourth grader. The school that they attended um, reminded me quite a bit of Sandy Hook Elementary School. Um, it was tough. and. Uh, uh, just 10 days later, it was Christmas Eve, and that night, my little girl uh, slipped a note under the Cookies for Santa plate, and it said, um, Dear Santa, um, please take my toys to heaven and give them to the children from Newtown, and please make it where people don't want to hurt each other with guns anymore. Um, and so I read that, and um, and, and it was very upsetting to me. And so I, those incidents really spurred you to take this stand? Absolutely, absolutely. And so I began to educate myself and learn more about gun violence. Um, you know, I have to say that prior to um, educating myself, when I thought about gun violence, I thought gun violence was, um, you know, mass shootings. I thought gun violence was uh, gang violence and um, you know occasional you know armed robberies and things like that so the other the other side would say the notion that more laws regulations is naive that the best way to keep people safe is for law abiding citizens to have more access and so obviously you know the argument i mean they have they have said we need to increase the number of people who have access to guns we should not constrict it the the you know the uh, cat's out of the bag. We already have guns everywhere. You put more restrictions, you only keep law-abiding people from having them. That argument, I'm sure you hear it when you go to the legislature. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Uh, well, what I would say is, you know, we are um, interested in um, in in facts and, and, and research studies, right? So we look at peer-reviewed academic research studies that have been conducted by, uh, you know, Boston University, Harvard, uh, um, Johns Hopkins, um, you know, people who have spent a lot of time um, searching CDC data, FBI data, and, you know, the conclusion that they come to over and over is that, in fact, um, more guns um, does mean more gun deaths and in fact states that have um, looser gun laws also see more gun deaths and so um, armed with that knowledge um, you know we feel that um, of course we're not in any way advocating that people give up their guns but we are saying that um, you know laws to make it easier for everybody to get guns um, are not the right direction that we need to go in. What's so tough about this debate is it is so emotional and I think there's studies on both sides. I mean there, there there's studies from people on the other side that would say states where there are free guns everywhere they are more safe and so I've heard it said on this show so it, that's why it's so tough sometimes to get to the bottom of it. I agree. Um, but 
it's something we should all talk about in a uh, in a in a responsible way. So let's um, let's open up the phone six one five seven three seven plus six one five seven three seven seven five eight seven. We're going to take a break. Uh, Jay, Philip, Carol, stay on the line. We'll get to your call. Uh, and we'll take your call and other calls. We'll also talk about the executive actions taken by the president. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.